Earlier this week, I read that the singer Justin Bieber was battling Lyme disease. This struck a chord with me as I remembered reading about other celebrities with Lyme disease. I had read an article about Avril Lavigne having the disease. I know that Alec Baldwin is also a sufferer. This was getting a bit strange, so I had to look online to see if there were any other celebrities who had the disease. I found this article entitled Famous People Living with Lyme Disease. This was starting to look like a celebridemic. There was also Ashley Olsen and Debbie Gibson and the actor Richard Gere. Another actor suffering from Lyme disease is Ben Stiller, as is ex-U.S. President George W. Bush. There were many others, including Kelly Osborne. Not only does model Bella Hadid have Lyme disease, but her mother and her brother are also sufferers. This apparent celebrity plague really piqued my interest, so I had to investigate further. Lyme disease is caused by a bacterium called Borrelia burgdorferi. It is transmitted to humans through the bite of infected ticks. The symptoms of untreated Lyme disease include, in the early stages, fever, chills, headache, fatigue, muscle and joint aches, and swollen lymph nodes. 70 to 80% of those affected suffer from a rash. Later stages include severe headaches and neck stiffness, loss of muscle tone or droop on one or both sides of the face, arthritis with severe joint swelling and pain, particularly in the knees, heart palpitations or irregular heart rhythm, dizziness and shortness of breath, inflammation of the brain and spinal cord, tingling and numbness in the hands, and nerve pain. This is a very serious illness, and for a singer or an actor, possibly career-threatening or ending. Lyme disease was first reported in the USA in the town of Old Lyme, Connecticut, in 1975, hence the name. It is now the most common tick-borne illness in Europe and North America. The disease was known long before this time, but was often mistaken for other diseases and misdiagnosed. There is no evidence that Lyme disease can be caught from another person. There are no known cases of it being transmitted by coughs, sneezes, or through a blood transfusion. There is some evidence that it may also be transmitted by sexual contact, but the transmission rate is unknown and more study needs to be done. Ticks appear to be the main vectors for the disease, and infection is transmitted by ticks or nymphs, as they are called in their immature state. The tick must be attached to you for at least 36 hours before the infection can be transmitted. How do we get in contact with these ticks? Ticks can't jump or fly, so we have to be in direct contact with them. Ticks attach themselves to leaves and grass by their lower limbs, and hold their upper limbs out in a position called questing, ready to grab onto any animal that is passing. When a host brushes past, the tick climbs aboard and looks for an opportunity to start feeding on the host. They inject their host with a numbing agent, and their bite is painless. These ticks are tiny, but once they attach to a host and begin to feed on blood, they engorge themselves and their bodies swell up. They can become as large as grapes. Absolutely disgusting. The very sight of an animal infested with these parasites should be a clear indication to avoid the animal. The natural response to seeing this is to feel disgusted. It is to recoil in horror and avoid all contact with the animal. This response is instinctual, and it is our body's way of avoiding the serious diseases ticks transmit to us. Dogs routinely become infested with ticks. Unless humans remove the ticks by hand with tweezers, spend money on anti-tick medicines, and regularly apply these medications to their dogs as a preventative measure, dogs will become infested with ticks. A dog's default state is to be infested with parasites. It's just like how if we don't regularly administer deworming medications to dogs, they will be infested with worms. Human babies do not need to be dewormed because we are not born with worms inside our bodies like virtually all puppies are. Unlike adult dogs, humans do not need to be dewormed every year because we don't eat feces and we aren't attracted to filthy things the way dogs are. 
Without human intervention, dogs are full of disgusting, harmful parasites. Because of our superior intelligence and ingenuity, and also because of our opposable thumbs and ability to use tools such as tweezers, we have created and can apply medicines to ourselves to repel ticks. We can also remove ticks. Dogs can do neither. You will never see a human being infested with ticks like this. Part of it has to do with our medicines and tweezers, but there is another reason dogs are more likely than humans to suffer tick bites and tick-borne diseases. It has to do with their behavior when they are out in nature. Let me explain. You can be invaded by a tick by direct contact with it if you are walking through woodland, for example. This would help to explain that the most rural states in the USA have the highest incidences of Lyme disease. Maine comes out on top of diagnosed Lyme disease cases, and it also boasts of being the most rural state. You can also be bitten by a tick through coming into physical contact with an infested animal, thereby transferring the tick from it to you. The most likely animal to transfer a tick to you is not a deer, it's not a rabbit, it's your dog. By the way, birds will clean the ticks off animals like deer, which is why you will rarely see a deer that is seriously infested with ticks. You will never see a dog tolerating a bird cleaning the ticks off of it uh, because dogs are too stupid to enter into a beneficial mutual relationship like that. Animals like rabbits and squirrels won't tolerate birds cleaning the ticks off of them because birds such as owls and birds of prey, you know, they... They hunt rabbits and squirrels, so those animals are naturally afraid of birds. But dogs have nothing to fear when it comes to birds. I wonder why they don't let the birds clean the ticks off of them. I think it's just because they're too stupid. When humans take their dogs for walks in rural areas, the humans tend to stay on the path and have minimal contact with foliage. Dogs, on the other hand, run everywhere, brushing against vegetation. Since dogs are routinely screened for Lyme disease, more is known about the prevalence of the disease in dog populations than in humans. IDEXX Laboratories, an American multinational company providing veterinary products and services, collected data from vets all over the USA and found that canine positive test reports was much greater than the number of human cases reported by the Center for Disease Control. Michael Yabsley, a parasitologist at IDEXX, or IDEX, I'm not quite sure how to say that, explained, quote, Dogs really are the canary in the coal mine for human infection. Our research team has evidence that the relationship between canine disease and human disease is strong, end quote. What this means is that humans face similar exposure risks as their dogs do, because they share a similar lifestyle and occupy a similar geographical area. Another factor is that while dogs cannot transmit Lyme disease directly to humans, they can bring ticks into a human environment, which then get passed on to the humans by contact with the dog. Tick and flea collars and tick removal become essential to prevent the spread. Besides Lyme disease, there are a host of other diseases that are spread by ticks, which can and do infect humans. These diseases can make us very sick, permanently disable us, and even kill us. For the purpose of this video, I will not be discussing the symptoms for each illness. This video would go on for way too long if I did, because there are so many different tick-borne diseases but I will provide links in the description so you can read up on them yourself. Suffice it to say, we are talking about very serious illnesses. The CDC states that the reported numbers of cases of Lyme disease, anaplasmosis, ehrlichiosis, spotted fever rickettsiosis, including Rocky Mountain spotted fever, babesiosis, tularemia, and Powassan virus disease all increased from a total of 48,610 reported cases in 2016 to a total of 59,349 cases in 2017. 
Reported cases capture only a fraction of the overall number of people with tick-borne illnesses. Even so, the number of reported cases of Lyme disease in the United States has tripled since the late 1990s. This graph shows the increase in total reported cases of tick-borne diseases in the United States over the years. Ticks that spread germs to people can have up to two to three year life cycles, which is why the rise in number of reported infections isn't steady from year to year. Many other factors can affect the number of ticks and resulting infections from year to year, including temperature, rainfall, humidity, and the availability of hosts for the ticks to feed on. In any given year, the number of ticks in an area will be different from region to region, state to state, and even county to county. The CDC provides statistics for many of the tick-borne illnesses, and you can click on the names of the diseases to view graphs which show the increase of reported cases over the years. It is reasonable to assume the rise of reported tick-borne infections has to do with the increase in dog population and dog ownership over the years. This large evaluation of pet ownership human tick encounters and tick-borne diseases shows that pet owners, whether of cats or dogs, are at increased risk of encountering ticks and suggests that pet owners are at an increased risk of developing tick-borne diseases. Not only can we assume the rise in dog population contributes to the growing number of reported tick-borne infections in humans, it makes sense to surmise that the humanization of dogs also plays a role. It's become popular to treat dogs like children. Dogs used to be dogs. They used to sleep outside. Now, dogs are sleeping in our beds and bringing ticks into our homes. The CDC states that tick-borne diseases increasingly threaten the health of people in the United States. Over the past two decades, Seven new tick-borne germs that can cause illness have been identified in the United States. Reported cases are increasing, and the geographic range of some ticks that spread germs also continues to increase. As for prevention, every single website I visited gives the same advice. Among other things, they advise us to examine gear and pets. Ticks can ride into the home on clothing and pets, they say, and then attach to a person later. So carefully examine pets, coats, and day packs. Treat dogs for ticks. Dogs are very susceptible to tick bites and to some tick-borne diseases. They may also bring ticks into your home. Talk to your veterinarian about the best tick prevention products for your dog. Not one site gives the most sensible advice of all. Don't own a dog. Now, why is that? I think it has to do with the $70 billion per year pet industry and how veterinarians and powerful pharmaceutical companies don't want to quit selling the millions of tick collars, tick dips, shampoos, oral medications, and spot-on treatments these daft dog worshippers keep dishing out their money for. Those with a vested interest in promoting dog ownership rake in an exorbitant amount of money selling these anti-tick medicines to a hypnotized public that has fallen prey to dog cult propaganda and is seemingly incapable of critical thought. Think of all the other things we could be spending all that money on. What a disgraceful waste. Acquiring a tick-borne disease is just one of the many unwanted and hazardous consequences of owning a dog. The future may never be tick-free, but there would be a lot less humans affected by tick bites if the future was dog-free. <laughs>